Okay. I gotta put on my glass. Zephaniah 317. The Lord your God is among you, a warrior who saves. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will be quiet in his love. He will delight in you with singing. Come up. So recently we had a family member pass, and I'd like to pray for the members of the family that are going through a hard time. So, Lord, thank you for having everyone be here today. I'd like to pray for my great-grandpa. He served in the World War II. He's still alive, but he's going through the hardest time right now because it was his wife. He loved him with the bottom of his heart, and even more, we miss him so much. We, we wish he could be here with us to help pray right now, but he can't because he's going through the hard time, and we, we need support for him. So, Lord, please give us your strength and take a few breathes. Lord, you're God Almighty. We love you. In the name of Jesus, amen. We want to say good morning to all. Thank you, Jay. All I can think of there is uh, Psalms 4610. Be still and know that I am God. He truly is, Lord. Let us just pray for the service and thinking of everybody at home, and I know each one of you may be walking through a tough time, but at the same time, we're, we're awesomely made. We're very loved by him. He always loves us, and then he's always with us. So let's just bring that up. Heavenly Father, you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and end, as it says. And I just love to hear the heart of children, even in church, Lord. I thank you for that, even in the back. I praise you for those things, Lord. Sometimes we get so caught up in so many issues, Lord, but we have to remember all the blessings that have been bestowed on us. I thank you for our church family. I thank you for everybody at home. I thank you for all that are following you, Lord. Lord, let us not forget all those that don't know you, Lord, especially at this time, Lord. May they come to know you. May we lift them up. May we be the joy, may we be your light to share with them. And I thank you, and I ask you to let um, our praise and worship come to you and lift you up on high, and I just ask you to be with Pastor as he brings forth the word. And I thank you for even the young kids that have uh, just blessed us lately, even with the bells and everything else they've done. It's just a blessing, and it just makes you realize that we need to be off the bench and in the game, Lord, and at least sharing you and sharing your word because the child came and lived among us, Lord. You left the Father and came back down here. What an example, Lord. And then went to the cross for each one of us. Lord, let everyone here realize how much you love them so deeply that even if they were the only person, you would be there for them. Thank you, Lord. When we can call out to you, Lord, that's the only peace I've ever found in my life is through you, Lord. I thank you for that. And all this thanking and all this blessing and bringing you all the glory and honor, Lord, let us just now all rise and bring you glory and praise and worship you deserve. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand.
One, two, there it worked. Okay, good. Sorry. So let me just try again. It's good to see you this morning. <laughs> yeah, even if it can't be heard, it's good to be seen. It is good to be here with you today. It's also good to know that there are many who are at home and watching with us and worshiping with us today. You know, that's the amazing thing. The church has always been like this, that we are bigger than what we appear, that there is more that we can't see, and... Uh, and so now we're just starting to recognize that a little bit more, that there are no barriers in the family of Christ. Mm -hmm. There's nothing, as believers, we are one, no matter where we're at. And so welcome, welcome, it's good to be here, and most of all, welcome to our King, Jesus. Not newborn right now, our King, and uh, we're grateful to be here. I just want to give those who are here this morning an opportunity to... Uh, Pick up a comment card and uh, jot down uh, praises and requests that you might have. Uh, we love to hear from you uh, and just know how, what God's been doing in your life. Uh, if you're at home, you don't have a comment card, but I'll bet you can write me an email and uh, let me know what God's been doing. And I encourage you to do that today, all right? There are a couple quick announcements. Actually, there's a lot of announcements. I, I'm, I'm going to trust you to read most of them, okay? Okay? Yeah. All right, good. I'm going to trust you with that. Uh, first of all, today, following the service, uh, we're doing Lakeview Lunch on the Go again. Uh, you remember that from last month. This is something new we're starting and trying and uh, getting the word out so that others can come in as well. Uh, so after service, you can pick up a meal to take with you and enjoy uh, that blessing from God today. Also, be praying for those who may be coming in and joining us just driving through. Uh, Looking forward to some to be able to do that. And with that in mind, I would ask you to please, if you're here this morning and leaving, leave out the east at exit over here. That way, because there may be traffic coming in, and we'd like to not confuse that too much. Make sense? Will you do it, Courtney? See, I knew there's always one. <laughs> She's not driving. Okay. <laughs> Take care of her, Jim. Uh, also, just a quick reminder, uh, we had these a couple weeks ago, our uh, faith promise cards. There's an adult one and there's a kid one. So uh, parents, if you want to grab one for your kids, grab one and take it with. Uh, our giving to the Great Commission Fund, which is our missions giving, uh, runs calendar year. Our, play, our faith promise runs with the calendar year. So although we're not having missions conference until like April, I think it is, uh, we're, we're going to be thinking about and talking about our, our giving to send the gospel around the world. Uh, you've been so faithful with that, and we're so thankful uh, for your faithful giving throughout the year. Uh, God is using it. If you get a chance, go to the Alliance website and see some of the videos of what God is doing with our uh, international workers. I encourage you to do so. It'll encourage you. But we're going to be receiving our faith promise cards. You ready for this? By next Sunday. All right, because we need to tally everything, get it sent in, type stuff. But uh, so it gives our treasurers an opportunity to tally that. So by next Sunday, the 20th, would you please complete, prayerfully complete your faith promise card? There is a tab on the inside that you can, you can fill it out, keep half of it to remind you, tear the other half off. You can drop it in the offering box or in the office, and uh, we'll keep those. This, again, is a faith promise. And I just want to remind you, no one's going to come to you and say, hey, you promised you'd give. That's not how it works. This is between you and God. That's why I said pray about it. Pray about it and say, Lord, what do you want me to give this year? What are you going to provide for me to give? That's the faith part. Where you just say, Lord, you tell me what, and I'm going to trust you to make it happen. Uh, it's, a, it's a journey in faith for us, and it's such a blessed one. So I encourage you to take the time to uh, complete that, have that ready uh, by next week. One last thing. This is also coming up real quick. In your bulletin, there was an insert 
there was an announcement and an insert. So that should tell you something. If there's an announcement and an insert, pay attention. Uh, we are doing a Lakeview couple checkup uh, this year. So what that is, Prepare and Rich, which is an organization that has been doing uh, counseling materials for decades. I've been using them for a long, long time uh, with my counseling, my uh, marriage counseling, my premarital counseling. It's an excellent tool to begin conversations, which is what has to happen in any couple. And it's not like, oh, we're having all kinds of trouble. We need to do this. It really is, hey, do you want your, your relationships to be as strong as they can be? It's like anything else. You got to work on it. And sometimes a checkup helps to remind us of the things that need to take place. So uh, this is totally free from the 27th of December through the 27th of January. There's a block of time where you'll be able to go online, take the little survey that's there. It doesn't take very long. And you'll receive a printout, a couple checkup, sort of like when you go to the garage and they do the 30-point checkup on your car, and they give you the little list. That's what it's kind of like. You'll get that back and have a tool for you and your uh, the significant other to, to discuss, to talk about, to say, okay, here's things that we're doing really, really well. Let's keep doing that. Here are things that we can, we can improve. Let's improve them. So then find out how to do that. So uh, there's the insert is a uh, question and answer thing. Take a look at it. If you have other questions, talk with me. I'll be glad to, to tell you more about it. I'm excited about this opportunity. At the end of that time, I'll receive a summary report. Not, no names. It'll just be this percentage of couples said this, that, that sort of thing. Okay? And I intend to use that as a tool to help us as a church family grow together. So uh, please participate. It doesn't matter how far along you are in your journey, Tom. Do it. <laughs> All right? Uh, or, or how short a time you are. Okay, do it. it it's, and it can be even if you're just dating. Or you know, if you're married, you shouldn't be dating too, but you get the idea. All right? Help me out, Jeff. No, <laughs> don't. <laughs> so take the time to look at that. The information is there in the bulletin. Uh, those of you at home, you can uh, get the link to the bulletin and have all that information as well. Got it? I told you there was a lot. There's a lot more I'm not even telling you. So look at it, read it. Be praying about what God would uh, want you to be doing and, and participating in in the, in the days and weeks ahead, okay? Okay, let's continue our worship. Let's all stand. Good Christian men rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Give ye heed to what we say. News is news. Jesus Christ is born today. Hearts and lamb before him bow, and he is in the manger now. Christ is born today. Christ is born today. Good Christian men rejoice with heart and soul. 
also in your bulletin this morning, you'll find our responsive reading for the day, a chance for us to spend time in God's word together from Zephaniah chapter 3. You heard one of the verses already. We're going to read a few others this morning responsively. So I'll get us started. You jump right in and uh, we'll read through God's word together this morning, okay? Sing for joy, daughter Zion. Shout loudly, Israel. Be glad and celebrate with all your heart, daughter Jerusalem. On that day, it will be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will delight in you with singing. Yes, at that time I will deal with all who oppress you. I will save the lame and gather the outcasts. At that time, I will bring you back. Yes, at that time, I will gather you. The Lord has spoken. Let's hear his word this morning. Now God's own son was fast asleep, resting in the hay. And Mary watched her baby in the manger where he lay. No one seems to notice me. No one seems to care. That should be my food trough instead of babies there. So while the donkey grumbled that the world was so unfair, something else was happening, something over there. Yes, while the donkey felt unloved, some shepherds on a hill were guarding all their sheep in the cold, dark evening chill. And so, just for a moment, let's leave the stable shed and watch the shepherd's story as it unfolds instead. For over in the fields, the shepherds watched their flock until all of a sudden they had an awful shock. The nighttime sky quite suddenly was filled with shining light. They shielded their eyes, for it was so dazzlingly bright. Then all at once, from up on high, a voice came from the light. The shepherds looked, and soon they saw an angel wearing white. The angel spoke. Don't be afraid. I bring news of great joy. In Bethlehem, a Savior has been born, a baby boy. And this will be a sign to you. You'll find him wrapped in cloth and laying in a stable in a simple feeding trough. The shepherds looked around and wondered what had just occurred. Was that the voice of angels? Is that what they'd really heard? And so the shepherds very soon set off on their way keen to find the baby in a manger full of hay. So now you will have noticed that the stable is in view, although the shepherds still had lots of searching they must do. 
I'm guessing, but the Bible doesn't mention how they found the baby, but they probably just had to ask around. So let's imagine that they knocked on doors, and then they said, So knocking on another door, imagine that they said, Knocking on another door. And once again they said. But with every door they knocked on, they were always turned away till finally they found someone with something good to say. For when the shepherds found the final innkeeper, he said, The innkeeper then took the shepherds to his cattle shed to meet the baby Jesus as he rested in his bed. And so the shepherds bowed to pray at the baby's feet, announcing that it was God's son they had come to meet. Welcome, baby Jesus. An angel came to say that this is where we find our Savior sleeping in the hay. So now that we have found you, we have a person too. A lamb is all we have, and so we offer it to you. Now don't forget, the donkey was hearing all their prayers. Maybe God has noticed me. Maybe God's son cares. She thought about the baby's birth, and then she understood. The savior of our world thinks that humility is good. So from that day, the donkey saw her life through different eyes. Being there at Jesus' birth had made her realize that someone always notices. God will always care for he is always present, even when you're unaware.
Good morning. I can still hear some awesome music. That was great. I really like those bells. And hey, maybe that's what it'll be like in heaven, right? Just hear those bells. They keep going down the hallway as they go. Um, this morning, I wanted to talk to you. I was reminded um, the other day when I was in the car just praying um, about the gifts that God has given us. And I don't know if you were here this summer, I did a children's message. And it was about uh, the gifts that God gives us and how we have to open up the gift and look inside. Sometimes you get a gift bag and there's lots of gifts in there and you might miss something. You might not open the whole gift. And I was thinking about that as we're approaching Christmas and there's a lot of gifts that we get to give other people and we get to receive from other people. And, and I started thinking about the gifts that God has given us. And um, I've been thinking also about just the gifts and how we get to be given the gifts, but we also get to bless other people with the gifts that we um, are given by God. And I was thinking about some of the gifts that I've get, gotten for Christmas and even given for Christmas that rarely or never get used. Does anybody have any of those gifts? Or maybe you don't have them anymore because you gave them away. But what are some reasons that we don't use those gifts? Or we don't like it, maybe? I don't really like that. I don't need it is another reason why we don't use those gifts. And it just kind of sits there, either in the bag still after Christmas in the other room where you left it to put it somewhere or give it away. Or I don't know how to use this. Does anybody get gifts, like gadgety gifts? And you're like, I don't know how to use this. So it just sits there and it doesn't get used. Or one of the ones like for some of the clothing gifts we get, it makes me look weird. Okay, some of the gifts make us look weird so we don't wear them, right? It just doesn't fit right. It's not what I wanted. Okay, well, we do sometimes we want specific things for Christmas, especially when we're kids, and it's not what I wanted, so I'm not going to use it. And one of the other ones is you get gifts and you just don't have time to use them. Maybe they're things like a book and you just haven't had time to open the book and use it. And in God's word, we read about the gifts that God has given each of us, and there's a few different passages that talk about that, and one of them I was going to read today is in 1 Corinthians 12. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom, to another the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he gives them to each one just as he determines. And it goes on to talk about how the body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts, and, then all, and though all its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. For we are all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. So we all have these gifts to not only for ourselves, but to encourage other people to be used. Sometimes they make us look weird. Sometimes we don't want it. Sometimes we don't know how to use it. Maybe you don't even know what these gifts are. Maybe you don't know anything about spiritual gifts, but that doesn't mean that God hasn't given them to you. And I just think that that's something that the Holy Spirit has been placing on my heart, that 
we get gifts from God, and he knows exactly what gifts to give us. He says that it is given to us just as he determines and we don't get to choose what gifts he gets he gives to us but they are for his glory and so maybe you don't really know a lot about spiritual gifts and i would encourage you to spend some time looking in the bible and seeing what it says about spiritual gifts there's many different places to look than just here in 1 corinthians 12 but it also goes on to talk about how to use those gifts and Pastor Dave will be talking about that subject, and we've all probably heard 1 Corinthians 13 if you've ever been to a wedding. So one of the things that I also wanted to read is in Romans 11:29 in the Amplified Version. It says, For the gifts and calling of God are irrevocable, for he does not withdraw what he has given, nor does he change his mind about those to whom he sends. And so... I think that it's good to remember that God's not going to take those gifts away if we don't use them. But we do have to open up the gift and remember that he's given them to us. And maybe some of those things that um, God has given you that you've kind of said, I don't really want this. Maybe you've said, I don't know how to use this. And I'd like us just to take a minute as we go to prayer just to think about those things. Ask God to show you if there's areas that you have stopped him from working, that you have said, I don't want this gift, and you've said, I'm giving it back, and he's saying, well, I'm not taking it back, but it's still there, and God wants to use you by giving you this gift. So I'd like that if we could just spend a minute, ask God to reveal things that you are not opening up that he has given you. And also to, if you know already what it is, that you could ask him to forgive you and to ask him to show you how to use that gift or to give you the strength to use it if it is something that um, you have a hard time using because it isn't something that you're necessarily really, really good at. So let's just take a minute and then we'll go to prayer as a group. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you that you have given us so many wonderful gifts, and I thank you that you are faithful to reveal those to us. I ask that you would help us to be faithful in seeking out what those gifts are and using them for the purposes that you have given us. I ask that you would teach us by your Holy Spirit to be men and women who are led by your spirit, empowered by your spirit, seeking to do your will and not our own. Even when it isn't comfortable and even when it is hard to figure out, I ask that you would teach us, help us to seek out information from others who may know more about these things and that we wouldn't just say, well, I don't know anything about that, so I'm not going to use the gift that you have given each one of us and you give good gifts you are our heavenly father and you give us good gifts and i just ask that you would teach us guide us and direct us in those areas i ask lord god that you would just continue the work that you have begun here today I pray that you would open our hearts so that we can receive your word, and I just pray that you would give Pastor Dave your words by your Holy Spirit, that we would receive them, and I ask that you would be with those who are unable to be here. I pray that you would just encourage them as they 
are some of them listening right now at home and also just be with those who aren't able to listen. I ask, Lord God, that you would just speak to their hearts and move in their lives. I pray, Lord, for those who are hurting physically, emotionally, spiritually right now, and I ask, Lord God, that you would bring healing. You are the God who heals, that you would even allow us to be used to heal other people who are hurting, that we know need your touch, Lord. We thank you that you are a faithful God. We thank you that you are a God who is always with us, who doesn't just leave us on our own to try to figure this stuff out, that you have said that your Holy Spirit will guide us and direct us when we come to you and we submit to you. Lord God, help us to submit all of our lives to you and to live by your Spirit. Help us to trust you. Help us to lean on you so that you can lead us, just like the little sheep that are up here this morning. Help us to be led by you, our good shepherd. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you, Christy. Oh, it's good to be in God's house, God's people, reading God's word, his spirit with us to guide us. Have you been having a good Advent so far? A couple of you have, that's, we'll take it, okay. It's so good, you know, so far this Advent we've been reminded that, uh, first of all, we can trust every promise of God. And he, because he has kept every promise he's ever made, not the least of which is the coming of Jesus into the world that we're thinking about so much this holiday season. Because of that, you can know that with God, a promise made is a promise kept, right? All right. We focused on Jesus, the light of the world, and our honored position in the sun, our place in the sun, that honored place being called out of darkness into his glorious light is why we declare his praises so that our words, our very life, will brag on God because of all that he has done. Well, today, our attention centers on the word love. Both God's great love for us and our response of love to him. Do you remember the song, as a child, no doubt, Jesus loves me, right? Both, uh, it, for being the simplest of songs, it's perhaps, I think, one of the most powerful. Sing it with me. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Amen. I believe really with all my heart that there is nothing more powerful in all of creation than love, especially the perfect love of God that is expressed to us in Christ. To know that he loves me is the most precious thing in my life. Think about it for a moment. What more could there be? I would go so far as to say that God's love for us is at the very core of Christianity, the very core of our faith. I know there are a lot, a lot of many important concepts and doctrines in our faith. I get that. But I think that I could argue that they all center around and are dependent on God's love 
for you and me. I mean, after all, Jesus was the one who said that all the law and the prophets hang on what? Love God, love others. It's important. It's that important. Christmas has a lot to say about love. And as we prepare our hearts and our minds for this celebration of the birth of Christ, we're reminded of Joseph's love for his soon-to-be wife. Mary's love for her little baby boy. For God's love expressed in that child for all of creation. God loved the world in this way that he gave his one and only son. It's God's love for us today that we want to look at. And this scripture that we read from Zephaniah helps me to bring it into focus Focus in again on verse 17 with me this morning. Where the prophet said, The Lord your God is among you, a warrior who saves. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will delight in you with singing. Zephaniah was writing to Israel, prophesying how God would judge them for the rebe their rebellion against him. If you read through the rest of the chapter, that's where it begins. God was going to judge them for their rebellion against him. And, and then he follows that with the pronouncement of the joy that he would bring them following their exile. The judgment was that they were going to be taken away as slaves to another country. <sighs> but he said, but when that is done, great joy. So to be really true to the text as we read this verse in verse 17, you also need to see that when you individually or we as a church or a nation, when we sin against God, we open ourselves up to God's judgment. God's love does not cancel that out. And we need to remember that. I know it's not fun to talk about judgment, especially at Christmas time, which is peace and hope and love and joy, and it should be. But it is that dark background of judgment that makes the jewel of the incarnation shine that much brighter. As Philip P. Bliss's hymn said, the whole world was lost in the darkness of sin. The light of the world is Jesus. That's the darkness is the background. Jesus is the light. You see, even in judgment's night, God's love is not diminished. The first advent of Jesus was God sending his light into the world via his son. And it was a dark world. For 400 years, they had heard, not heard the voice of God in Israel. They felt abandoned and lost. It was a dark world. But at just the right time, God sent his son to shine the light of truth and to provide the way for all to be restored in a relationship with God, a relationship that was broken because of sin. And this verse in Zephaniah beautifully describes God's love that is expressed for us at Christmas. It starts with, and appropriately so, it starts with Emmanuel. You know what that means, right? God with us. Wasn't that what Zephaniah was telling the people of Israel? He said, the Lord is among you. The Hebrew word kareb means the nearest part, literally the very nearest part, really speaks of just being at the center of it all. And he was saying to Israel, oh, the Lord is Kerem. He's among you. He's with you. He's the very nearest thing that could be to you. His presence with us is the ultimate expression of God's love. 
Think about it for a minute. I use this little example just about expressing love for someone else in need. There are people in need around us, and there, there are some people who, for whatever reasons, are able to ignore the very existence of need. They think, poor people? What poor people? I don't see anything. They're oblivious to anyone in need. Then there are others that see the need. They see people suffering. And, and they'll give money so that someone else can help them. And there's nothing wrong with that. Don't misunderstand me. But then there are there's people, a person who, who sees the need and goes himself, herself, to whoever God leads them, gets their hands dirty, digging a well or planting crops or building a house or delivering groceries or whatever it is that God's called you to do in that situation, using the gifts that Christy talked about just a little bit ago, because it'll be different for all of us, and that's fine. But they go and they do it themselves, whatever is needed to relieve the suffering of those in need. And so I just want to ask you, which do you think is the best expression of love? You see, God could have just said he loves us. He did. Or he could send someone else to tell us like he did with the prophets in Israel for hundreds of years. Or he could come himself and tell us and show us how much he loves us. He could come himself and show us that there is no greater love that you can have for someone than if you would lay down your life for them. That's why it's important for us to know and to remember that the Lord is among you. Because that's how you know He loves you. He is Emmanuel, God with us. But even then, what if being there was no help at all? I'm reminded of this story of a little boy who was having trouble getting to sleep at night. He's afraid of the dark. And his parents would put him to bed, and he'd be calling out for them as soon as they walked out in the hallway. Mom, Dad, and they just wanted, to, and, and they said, son, they were, they were believers. They said, son, do you need to remember, Jesus is always with you. He's always with you. And the little boy thought for a moment, he said, I know that, but I would like someone with skin on. <laughs> you see, sometimes we struggle with this. need to remember that God is with us and that it matters. His presence is there to help us. Think about it. This week, Wednesday night actually, I went into my office and I left my computer on and after a men's group I came into the office just to close some things up and there was a screen that said attempting to repair drive D. I'm like that's not good. <laughs> and so here's the question. Who would, who would be better to help me get the computer working? Myself or Steve? Here's a hint. The answer is Steve, okay? And he did. And it's the same with God. He's with us, but he's also able to do something about it. The point is that God, who is among us, is also a warrior who saves. He is with us and he's able to do something to help us. Something that none of us could ever do for ourselves. He cleanses us from sin. 
and saves us from death. I like how the New International Reader's Version puts this verse. It says, the Lord your God is with you. He is mighty enough to save you. Oh, we need to remember that. He is mighty enough to save you. And behind all of that, we come back to where we started. It's his love. He will renew you. He'll repair you. He'll put you all back together, make you like new in his love. That's not to say that I'm not convicted of my sin and my failures, but I'm convicted because the light of his great love, in the light of his great love, I see very clearly what is really the problem. My sin. I see sin for what it really is. Sin is what disappoints the one who loves me so. Sin are the things that disappoint the one who rejoices in me, who loves me. And when you are loved like that, and when you love someone, you don't want to disappoint them ever, right? The Lord is among you. He is mighty enough to save you. God gladly renews you in his love. And then he makes one more statement here that has to be one of my favorite images in the Bible. God delights in you with singing. To my knowledge, no one has ever written a song about me or even sung a song in my honor before except once and it is God who delights over me with singing a number of years ago when I was in one of the lowest valleys of my life I was out of ministry I'd, I was hurt as a result of my own actions I mean I did it <laughs> that in God's judgment, I felt that I was damaged goods, that I was unwanted, that I was worthless, as sometimes judgment will make you feel. And it was during that time that I had a very real sense that God was singing over me. It was a song that I had heard before, but it was different than hearing it on the radio. It, I, I can't explain it to you. I just knew that this was God singing to me. I'll take care of you. Don't be sad. Don't be blue. I'll never break your heart in two. I'll take care of you. I'll kiss your tears away. I'll end your lonely days. All that I'm really trying to say is I'll take care of you. I want you to know that I love you so. I'm proud to tell the world you're mine. I said it before, I'll say it once more. You'll be in my heart till the end of time. I still can't think of that song without knowing, remembering that time when I was assured that day that he loved me. The thought that he was actually proud to tell the world that I was his. It's never left me. It still makes me cry tears of pure joy. But it wasn't just an experience either. Because his word confirms it. I mean, he says here, he delights over me with singing. So, that, yeah, that's what it was. I know, I know full well that I am very rarely delightful. <laughs> okay? I can produce witnesses to the fact even. 
but God still delights in me because he loves me. He could rebuke me. He could really rake me over the coals and be justified in doing so, and it has happened before. But even in that, he still loves me. He delights in me. Friends, he delights in you too. I don't know all the things that you're going through. I don't know the burdens of your heart. I don't know the depth of your hurt or sorrow or pain. But I know Jesus loves you. He delights over you with singing. Oh, listen to his song. Go to his word and listen to his song. The Lord is with you. He's mighty enough to save you. He gladly renews you in his love. He delights over you with singing. It's important for us to remember that this Advent because Christmas is a celebration of God becoming a man to live with us and to die for us so that every one of us can have a relationship with God through Christ. The Lord your God is among you, a warrior who saves. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will delight in you with singing. This expression of God's love for you at Christmas ought to just take, take your breath away. It ought to make your heart just burst. Unable to contain all the love he's offering. I want you to be reminded this morning of this. That was a thought from our childhood days singing Jesus loves me. It's true. It's true. No matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, no matter what judgment you deserve, God loves you. God loves you. Enough to send his son to die for you. I know there are all sorts of reasons why he shouldn't love you that much, but he does. Stephen was reading this by Stephen Brown. Your, your value has been determined not by the world or the church or your Christian friends. Your value has been determined by the God of the universe who sent his son to a cross because you were that important to him. You see, the best thing that you can ever do is remember how much he loves you and love him back. Develop that love relationship with God. Why is it so important to see how God loves you? <laughs> well, it's because you learn to love him by allowing him to love you. You can't love until you've been loved. And then you can only love to the degree to which you've been loved. You get love from the source, and then you'll have it to give away. That was another quote, uh, quote by Stephen Brown. And it goes perfectly with what God has told us in his word in 1 John 4, 19. We love because he first loved us. And so I ask you this morning to allow the truth of his outrageous love for you to just sink into your mind and into your heart this Advent. Take some time to ponder it. Set aside all the other junk that's going on in your life all the things that cry out for your attention and just think about this expression of God's love for you. Think about the amazing way that he chose to express that love to you. 
The Lord your God is with you. He's a warrior, mighty to save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. And he will delight in you with singing. This is a Christmas love song for you. This baby in a manger. A Christmas love song for you. Allow him to love you and learn to love him back. If that's your main focus, everything else will fall into a place, fall into place for an amazing Christmas, an amazing life. Free to live in the in his glory because he loves you. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much for the truth of your word that is a reminder to us of your great love. Father God, I pray that this Advent season, our thoughts and our attention would be drawn to you to your great love for us so that no matter what else is going on in our lives we would not lose track of this vital truth and allow it to motivate us to obedience and love for you and we'll give you the praise for it father We ask all these things in the matchless name of Jesus. Your gift of love to us all. Amen. As we stand, let's just remember John 3.16. God so loved you, the world that he gave his son for us. God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day. To save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. He has come for us, this Jesus. He's the hope for all mankind. Come for us, the Messiah, born to give us life. From God, our Heavenly Father, a blessed angel came, and unto certain shepherds brought tidings of the same. How that in Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. He has come for us, this Jesus. He's the hope for all mankind. He has come for us, the Messiah.
Father, that you would send your Son as the perfect expression of your love for us. It boggles my mind, Lord. And it moves me to respond in love. And so, Lord, as we leave your house today, as we head out into the day and the week that you've set before us, Show us those opportunities that we have to express our love to you through the things that we say, the, the praise and the adoration that will speak to your name, through the things that we do as your hands and feet, expressing our love for you by loving others who are around us. Lord, allow it to be seen in every attitude that we project even. That people just from being around us will know there's something different here. And help us, Lord, to always give you the glory for it. As we ask these things in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Let's go with God.